What kind of dog doesn't look at that? Hi guys, Nobu and I are here in New York City. New York. I really wanted to vlog the whole way here, but we flew a red eye last night and it was just super difficult. So Nobu did really, really great for his first time flying. I was kind of nervous because usually I bring Grizzly, but I wanted to bring him and I'm so happy that I brought him. Um, and I'll tell you why in a second, but um, he did great on the flight. He was so excited to see the kids at the airport. I hate flying red eyes to New York. It's like you get like two hours of sleep and then the travel time once I landed at seven in the morning was like forever, but okay, you don't wanna hear that. So anyways, we got we here. We had to wait like four hours before we could check in. So we got breakfast at the, we just got like a little green juice and I fed him. I'm feeding him this trip. Stella and Chewy's freeze-dried patties instead of farmer's dog just because it's easier to transport um, and he loved it I'm just really hoping it's not upsetting his stomach, but it's like four o'clock now and I fed it to him at like 11 a.m. And he's drank so much water since then and I've taken him out a couple times and he won't go to the bathroom so I think he's all just thrown off about where to go in the city, but at least I know he can hold it so he doesn't go to the bathroom on the bed. Like he try, he will jump down if he like really has to go. So I'm using the bed as like his crate. So yeah, I'm not gonna be having a crate for the week. If he has an accident, I'm gonna have to go buy and buy a crate. So I get that question a lot of the times for puppies traveling, do they need a crate or not? I didn't fly him in a crate. He just flew in the cabin with me um, and he just laid there and was a good boy. Because he's a puppy that has really good control of his bladder, I'm gonna try it without a crate. I'm so happy I brought him when he's this age because he's going to be desensitized of so many noises. There was like a window washer that scared him and he was like jumping, trying to like jump backwards. I'll show you guys like how I'm desensitizing him of that because you have to do it in the right way and not just exposing him to it. Have you been sleeping for four hours? Maybe like three hours. And we're gonna go have a play date with one of my friends who lives in the city. And then we're gonna meet up with another one of my friends um, who just happens to be here, who's also my client for dinner. So I'm super excited um, and I'm going to vlog as much as I possibly can. It's super hard when I have him and I have to be holding the camera and then he's like not walking on a leash, but it will be such good t content that I'm really gonna try. Nobi, do you wanna go meet Tenley? Come on, will you go potty? Nobu, I know you need to go. It's been like a million years. We made it to the grass, sort of grass. Yay. Good boy. You wanna go see Courtney? He's honestly a dog right now that I would prefer he pulls forward. I think pulling forward is easier to fix. <laughs> Can I take off his leash? Yeah. <gasps> Get him, Tenley. Whenever we leave the apartment, she thinks she's outside, so she always goes to the bathroom in the lobby of our building. So we're wondering if it's okay to carry her all the way outside or if there's something we should be doing to train her while she's on the ground on the way out. When's the last time you guys tried letting her walk out this there? Morning. Oh, and literally she today. Like she'll wait until we get right there and then she squats to pee. Or she'll wait, pee after the elevator? Yeah, no, like she'll, all the way no, she'll the lobby. Pee before the elevator, though. So what we're going to do is like hold her focus the entire time walking out. So you're right. Okay. Oh, Let's he said it. that? Okay. Yes! Telly! Yes! She's like uh, pausing. Yes! Yay! <laughs> Telly! Okay, come! Yeah, she's all hesitant, like... <gasps> okay! Wait! Okay! Go! Does she always pause there or no? Maybe a little bit, yeah. Okay, so I finally... Oh, she's peeing right now. Oh. Good girl! Good girl! Yay! Good girl! We forgot, so I should have said go potty. Yeah, I do that more to get her to poop because peeing, she'll pee in the first like 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Of pee. Like she is so good about peeing outside. Leave it? This is really good lighting right here, isn't it? <laughs> oh my God, you guys are so cute. You guys are dating. Oh my God, the way he walks. I know. It's so clumsy. Anytime she looks down, you say Tenley. Okay. Or look to okay. bring her focus back up. Tenley. And then every single second she's looking yes. at you right now, yes. you tell her yes. 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 So good. When do you give the treat? It just depends on the dog. Like I say yes 
twice and he loses focus. Oh, so it's the second she loses focus and then when she looks back at you, you, you want to catch it before. So if I okay. know he loses it after two yeses on that second yes or the third yes, okay. I'm giving him a treat with it. You want to try to do it before he loses it. Every dog is different with their attention span. Wow, so good. And see how when she's looking at you, she's not eating shit. Right. Same thing, if she's looking at you, she's not peeing. Henley, sure. come. Good. Yes. And instead of uh, uh you want to call her name. Oh, yes. what a good girl. Okay, so I asked my followers a bunch of questions. So we're just going to go through the ones I got on Instagram. Five million are about Nobu. So I guess I'll just cover that right away. What breed is he? I get this question so many times. He's an Akita. His uh, chocolate color is a recessive trait. And um, very, very rare. So, yep, he's an Akita. How old is he? He's three months old today. Yes. Um, I love Nobu, I love Nobu, me too. Let's see. How did Nobu do on the long flight? Did you have a layover? We did not have a layover. He did so good. It's like a five and a half hour flight. Um, and I hate the red eye to New York because I don't sleep, but I was glad that I did it for him at this age because it's obviously the time that he's just sleeping. So he's been like a champ at potty training, so I wasn't concerned at all. Um, no layover, he did amazing. Um, how do you teach a dog to sit before a road? Um, so uh, you just tell the dog to sit on the corner of the sidewalk every single time. Um, you just have to be super persistent about it. Like you, the dog does not go forward until they're sitting and even more importantly like making eye contact to check in with you to see if they can go across the street. So definitely the sit and adding in a look command with it is super important. So they get your permission before crossing the street. Um, let's see. My 85 pound lab pulls so hard on the leash. How do I get him to stop before he tears my arm off? Number one, I would ask what you're walking him on. So I would suggest to walk him on a harness. Um, I like front clipping harnesses. The easy walks are the best, definitely for labs. Um, it helps with the pulling. Any harness is great for taking the pressure off of the neck and giving you full control of the body. Um, but back clipping harnesses, um, they don't help with pulling and sometimes it's argued that they entice the dog to pull more because if you think about like sled dogs in Alaska, that's what they wear to pull the harnesses. But I, I do think that like back clipping harnesses are totally fine for like small dogs as long as you do healing training with it. So that's the next step is that no harness, no collar, no nothing is going to be, um, it's not magic. You have to put in the work to do healing training. So. There's a bunch of different specific exercises for healing training, but the very first thing that you should do is just focus on getting your dog's focus while walking like the entire time. So the second the dog looks down, call the dog's name back up to look at you. If a dog, if while you're walking, your dog is looking up at you, they're not pulling, they're not eating crap off of the ground, they're at your side healing. So that's kind of like a very quick tip on that. And then definitely teaching a heal command um, and just getting your dog to really be following every single step you're taking and looking to you. Oh, are you okay? Um, let's see. I have a three month old golden and he won't stop biting people. How do I train him to stop? So this is probably like the number one um, question I always get asked and I answer it every single time. Um, but there's a bunch of different ways. So it just really depends on the instances that the dog is mouthing. So if if the puppy is biting other people, it's most likely, I'm just assuming, it's out of excitement, like when the dog is seeing the, the person, um, especially Goldens, because they love people. So the first thing I would do is get the puppy to control himself before going up to the person. So getting the dog to sit and look up at you. Um, I noticed I didn't right away, like say, just shove a toy in his mouth, because that doesn't always work. You have to kind of, think about why is the dog mouthing? Is it out of excitement? If the dog is just kind of laying there and like mouthing, um, like Nobu was doing that to me on the bed this morning. Um, in that instance, when it's not a lack of self-control and it's 
true like teething or like wanting to play and then I redirect him to his toy but a lot of the times once the dog gets a little bit older it's lack of self-control so making the puppy um, sit before going up to the person keeping the intro really short and controlled calling it back to you and focus on you is important and then I would also teach a touch command so like hand targeting where dogs just instead of the natural instinct to just go and mouth at the hand is just to go and like tap their nose to the hand um, and that's what I would make him do every time he's being introduced to somebody um, and a lot of the times you can tell if a puppy's about to get into a mouthing state and they're like lacking self-control they just start climbing on the person like people like know it's coming but still just wait until they like start mouthing to stop it stop it before you know just make him take a break back with you sit down okay go say hi again because it brings him right back down to full self-control so there's some quick tips on that when did i get nobu i've had him for three weeks now um he's the best How do you know when the time's right to leave Mika home alone and out of her crate when I'm at work? This is one of my past clients, actually. Um, so what I would recommend with that is starting with small increments of leaving the dog out of the crate. So I wouldn't jump to like crating her all day. I think, you know, you let her out at a lunch break, but I wouldn't recommend jumping from like you know being crated all day long to just being out all day long I would start with short increments like when you go and get the mail see what she does um, and then I would also just keep increasing it from there so like okay she did great let's see what she does when I go to the grocery store um, and what you're looking for is to make sure that she's not having accidents and she's not destroying things um, and as long as she's not doing those two things then you can continue to increase the time. If, however, at any point she has an accident or starts chewing on something, you need to decrease the time out of the, like go back to a really strict crate immediately. I think when people are weaning off of the crate and then the dog has one kind of like accident, they're like, oh, it's just a fluke, you know, she'll be okay. And then they just keep giving the dog more and more and more freedom and then the dog keeps taking advantage of all that freedom. So you just have to, you know, if they take advantage of the freedom, shut it down once, let them know they don't earn the opportunity to be out of the crate if that's what they're going to do. And then um, once you have another solid week in the crate, try again. And so increasing, decreasing as well is the key to that if you need to. I remember when I started leaving Grizzly out of the crate, I tried it once when he was like eight months old. Um, he chewed up a shoe and then I went back to the crate for a couple weeks and then let him out again and I never had to go back again. But he's a super chill dog so there's dogs you might have to go back and forth 20 times. It just depends on the dog. Um, teething tips I just gave but this person said spraying him with water doesn't do anything. He just drinks it. Exactly. That's just, you know, um, positive punishment, right? Weren't we just talking about that? Um, you're not telling him what to do instead. Like the key with, um, with any bad behavior is redirecting him to the right thing to do when he feels that need to chew. So if you're like, oh, when you feel that need to do your chew, you're going to be sprayed. And that's not going to help him know what to exert that need to chew onto at all. So don't spray your dog. Is it true that neutering your dog takes away how active your dog is? I don't think I would use the term active. I think I would say it takes out the extra unnecessary testosterone and will like calm your dog down a bit. It depends on the dog though. Some don't have an energy level change. Um, but yeah, if your dog, it's really like helps with like the mental like distractions and all of that. That's what I see calm down, not necessarily the how active and the amount of like exercise your dog needs definitely not that um oh i can't find your post about how to teach your dog touch could you somehow link it here maybe i don't have one um yeah i'll just, see i'll send it to you after this but basically what you want to do is hold your hand out um and just tell the dog so I start if like the dog is sitting right here I start just saying touch and I'll have the treat behind my back um, in the other hand 
And so a lot of the times, so before this, I like to like hold a treat so this hand smells like a treat um, and then tell the dog touch or whatever command you want to use for that. And typically the dog will just poke their head right here to like sniff at it. Um, and right when your dog's nose hits this hand, you praise them for it. Um, and then it's really important to switch off hands and make sure that they're touching every single way. There are some dogs, I find this in um, the more like well-trained dogs um, that are just learning touch. When I stick this out, they just sit there sitting, like not knowing what to do. So if you need to, you can always, you wanna always start like this, but if you need to take the treat in this hand and go behind here to kind of lure him there in the beginning, you can definitely do that. And if you need to go closer to the vase, there's some dogs, they literally have to go like this and they just like breathe and touch. Um, and then I treat them for that. So that's how you do touch, but you want to try to not just lure him there every time. You want to try with the harder thing first. And then once they're getting it, definitely wean off of like the treat luring. Um, what's your opinion on dogs sharing food bowls? I don't think that they should share food bowls because I think every dog should have their own bowl, um, more so for like nutrition and making sure every each dog gets the, the right amount of food for them. Um, and then I, I think it can just cause problems as well if you're, you know, sharing a food bowl. I've been trying to potty train my puppy for weeks but haven't been very successful. Please help. Um, I, as I always say, your best friend for potty training is the crate. So I'm not sure if you're using a crate, but if you are, I'm assuming you're not. Um, so just having a structured routine with the crate is everything. So know that during the day, your puppy can hold it for the number of months old they are plus one hour. So during the day, the dog can be in the crate for that long. Um, and then that teaches the dog self-control. So it's super important to use the crate because it's the one place in the world that a dog will hold like their bladder, bowel movements, everything in as long as it's small enough that it's their own little den area. Um, so, so important to crate train. Um, and the day should revolve around the crate and after he goes outside to go potty he should earn freedom out of the crate. A very young puppy should only get about 20 to 30 minutes of freedom after going potty outside, um, but it definitely can vary um, depending on the dog. So there's a couple quick tips. I also don't recommend potty pads if you don't have to um, or if you do live in like the city and you can't take your puppy out potty pads maybe right in the beginning and then weaning off as soon as they get those second round of shots. What is the best way to help a dog that has anxiety? Anxiety is very, very unique to every single dog. Um, it's so, this is such a ge like generic question, um, but it depends on what they have anxiety about. So couple quick tips I would say just generally is whatever the dog is anxious from about um, you want to shift their mind off of it so just exposing them to that thing that's giving them anxiety over and over and over again is not going to help them get over it the negative thoughts will just keep building so what you want is that thing to happen whether it's like anxiety just being outside in the city and like their mind is going everywhere you want them to be exposed to it, um, but their mind shifted off of it. So you want to be able to get your dog's focus up on you and be persistent about trying to do that. Um, and that's that's what we do with a lot of the um, desensitizing a dog that has anxiety issues. Um, and then the other tip I have is that it's super important for dogs with anxiety to have like a little safe place, like a crate. Um, so definitely in crate training, making that a positive place where they can shut their mind off because even if they seem okay around in the house, um, a lot of times like sounds or whatever can um, make them have anxiety and freak out. So that would be so difficult if you just had anxiety just all the time anywhere you were. So the dog needs a place to be able to shut the mind off for sure. How to 
teach a dog not to chew furniture and other things. Our sofa is almost eaten up by my nine month old lab. Is this common in labs? And will this stop naturally when he grows up? Very common in labs to just chew forever and like try to steal food forever, but I don't think there's really any excuse for like a nine month old lab to still be doing that. Um, it sounds like he's gotten too much freedom and not enough structure for sure. So that's something I feel like once a dog stops teething at like six months old at the latest, um, they don't really have any real um, excuse to be like chewing on things anymore as long as you've been really good about redirection until then. So I would say um, this is more of a self-control issue and also I would teach a leave it command with the couch um, and add on more structure because with a lab, I, I don't know if that's something they will ever grow out of, to be honest. Some, some dog breeds just do. How can I get my eight week old puppy to pay attention to me to train him? Uh, eight week old puppies have a very short attention span, so I wouldn't be too strict about, you know, him like looking at you forever um, and trying to get his focus. But I would say just, just teaching the puppy his name is really good to do at eight weeks old. Um, just to be coming to his name on commands and then adding in like a sit. My friend's dog has separation anxiety. How do we train him to be okay alone? Um, so separation anxiety happens because the dog deems you or the, the person as their safe place. So you have to, um, you have to designate somewhere else as their safe place. Like a little den area, a crate works best for this. And the reason why I like a crate better than a gated off area is because in a gated off area, the dog can kind of like roam around still, be anxious and in a crate, they're forced to control themselves and learn how to chill. Um, so this is a very, very unique process to each dog, but you have to go about it through the processes of desensitization and counter conditioning. I like to teach the dog crate on command so they're not being anxious when going in there. Um, and then a weight coming out. So it's not like, oh my God, I gotta get out of here. Um, and it just depends on the dog, you know, how to go about this because you you can't you're pushing them past their comfort level when you're working through desensitization um, but not to the point where they're too stressed out because you're just not getting anywhere if they're way too stressed so it's a very unique process but that's what I would start doing is trying to associate the crate as like a positive place and go back to crate training yeah so we'll do another Q&A soon but thank you guys so much for your questions um, and we'll see you soon Thank you.